Hi guys and welcome back to In The Club Presents At The Club. If you haven't done so, please do consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the page and dinging that bell for notifications. At The Club is of course brought to you by Class For Kids. Class For Kids is an industry leading booking and management software designed for kids activity clubs. We work with 250,000 monthly users around the world to help them save time on admin and organise their business. If you'd like to learn more, click on the link in the description below. So on this week's episode, we have Amy McGee. Amy is a talent acquisition specialist and she talks to us a little bit about her career progression so far. She also gives us some really nice insights about what it looks like to be hiring new members of staff and to be applying for positions. Yeah, so um, I always worked in sales positions throughout studying at university and um, when I was applying for graduate roles, recruitment positions looked for sales experience um, and they were looking for graduates as well so it just kind of made sense um, and through the interview process I was really interested in the role it sounded right up my street you know and I had really they were looking for like people with people skills and all that sort of thing and um, I had applied for a pharmaceutical role and um, recruitment position and I had some um science background throughout my studies so it kind of meshed well um so i started in that industry and um it's all progressed from there so done about two years in pharmaceutical done some um financial roles commercial i've also done higher education basically with recruitment you do get um where recruiters who specialize in industries so you could reach out to them and they would have you know a specific person that can do your job or you get sort of all branched areas and um, recruiters who basically know how to recruit for a role like any type of role whether it be in-house or whether it be um an agency type of role um and that's where i generally have have fallen into um, and yeah i love it so do you find um with the, the kind of varied background of like the personality you have like a, a very social thing those those things work in your favor as a recruiter i think definitely you need to be comfortable reaching out to new people having those conversations definitely do need good people skills at the at the least not necessarily um need to be an extrovert you know you don't need to be the type of person that goes out and and is happy um at sort of big public events or even a big public speaker but just need to be able to have that connection one-on-one -on -one with people and make good relationships so um switching over to a more kind of like specified conversation now like we here we deal with a lot of coaches and teachers um and kids activity clubs who are in the process or will eventually be like hiring new members of staff so just right now staying away from the specifics of that role are there any techniques that you would apply kind of like on a general level like for searching for applicants or like people to fill a position yeah i mean from a, a company standpoint or from the recruiter standpoint um there are generalized techniques that you would always use and um, that can be handy for workers and people looking for jobs to know so things like um making sure your cv is up to date um always you know have an up-to-date cv just in case that one role that you're looking for is always um is if you're available for it you know whenever it becomes if it becomes open um and keyword searches so looking for specific experience specific um trainings that you've maybe had always listing everything that you know on your cv and being as specific as possible because recruiters and agencies will look for those specific terminologies among CVs. So yeah, just keeping your CV up to date, being as specific as possible, um, and just keeping yourself out there. Networking as well is a really good um, tool to utilize when looking for jobs. Talk about experience there, and this is this is one of the big things that I've kind of um, went up against in, in my career journey. So how important do you find experience versus personality? So how do you gauge someone who has more experience in a role against somebody who may have less experience but you can see there's passion and drive to succeed so like and do you rely like um on like gut instinct uh, rather than a formula or is it kind of case by case scenario it dep can depend how niche a role is so if you're only considering you know if you've only got two or three people that you're interviewing that 
are all equally qualified for a role, then yes, it will come down to personality and also things like where you can see them progressing in the role. So you might think that they've, sometimes you can use a scoring system at the minute for you. And if you've got 40 applicants, you know, sometimes if, if it's a high volume role, you can have 40 interviews. And if, say, five of them scored exactly the same and they would all perform equally as well in the role, you can niggle it down to things like how do you think they're going to interact with the rest of the team? How do you think they're going to influence the rest of the team? Um, where do you see them progressing in the company? Like, do they have good loyalty to previous employers? Do they have good longevity in a role? Um, and do you see them being upskilled? You know, like, have they proven that they've done that in previous sessions? Just in general, like, how passionate are they about their job? And do you see them with potential over over the other applicants who are also equally qualified? It can come down to be things like that. Yeah. So is that something you kind of you've learned to pick up on over time, or is it like something you just kind of you see? Is it just one of those things where like you have to have like boots on the ground, so to speak, to learn how people navigate their own sort of career journey, or is it like telltale signs? Yeah, there is there can be telltale signs even from the CV point before the interview. You can sometimes tell, you know, oh, this person, you know, have been here for years. They've they've obviously done a lot of trainings when they've been in that role. Um, they've went above and beyond their their expectations in the role. Um, and then just how they present themselves in the interview. I mean. Obviously, you you do get people that are more effective communicators, um, who maybe answer the questions more specifically to present themselves in that way, um, and also you know, um, so that so that can be really beneficial. But yeah, you, there are specific questions you can ask to sort of filter out those those things as well. There's a lot of chat. I'm I'm a I like to read a, a LinkedIn post uh, every now and again. And there's a lot of chat in the recruitment space about um, how many interviews people go on in the recruitment process being like over long sometimes. So if there's an, in an ideal scenario, um, what would the recruitment process be like for an applicant? Like what would their journey be from first application to job offer? How would you think they kind of write? The right, the right journey to take. Well, I, you know, I've been an applicant myself many times as well, <laughs> um, and. I would say the the most efficient process is literally just sending in your CV, having someone contact you, maybe an initial phone call to kind of niggle out if you actually fit the role or not, Get, getting through that first. Because sometimes, you know, there has been cases where you can apply, go to the interview, and then actually it's maybe not what it was described as, or, you know, it, they're just looking for someone completely different that's that not relevant to your experience at all. So just making sure you have that initial phone call so that it's symbiotically beneficial to both parties. Um, and then um, having one interview, I, I do think one clean interview, getting out all the questions that you need and um, the employer needs to know um, and then moving to offer at that point. You know, there are more specialised roles where you maybe have to go back and do like a practical or a technical exam as such. Um, but yeah, as an applicant, I would say that would be the most efficient and beneficial um, interview process. And just to like flip that right on its head and in, in, the, in the exact same ideal scenario, what would the recruitment process be? be like for a recruiter like what would their journey go be from going from like job posting to position filled what do you think is like the ideal the best way to do it is to make sure that your applicant is actually active um and actually interested in the role because you know it's just a waste of time without that um so making sure you've got a good job advert that and good in the sense that it's specific enough and it attracts attracts the right person um, and also um, making sure that it's detailed enough to filter out anybody who who isn't what you're lo exactly looking for. Um, and yeah, so basically the job advert is a really important part. Um, making sure you've obviously got a good recruiter behind you um, to look for passive applicants as well and that can mean you know people that have been in maybe a role for a couple of years who are quite happy there but maybe they're now overqualified and you reach out to them you know it could be head hunting it could be you know linkedin is a great source for that basically making sure you've got a recruiter that knows people in the industry and knows um to look for signs of people that are 
passively on the market as well. Um, and also looking at good applicants that have applied also. Good, clean interview process that's quite efficient and fast for the, the interviewee. Um, because they, if they are who you're looking for, probably other people are interested as well. So just maintaining a good relationship and good experience for the applicant the whole way through. Um, and then a good clean offer process as well, you know, just making sure it's all as efficient as possible, um, as beneficial to the applicant as possible. And then, you know, you should reach a good conclusion. Some really great stuff there from Amy. Thanks very much for coming onto the podcast. If you haven't done so, please do consider leaving a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and ding that bell for notifications. I will see you in the next episode.